Hi! Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. Um, we have at least one more week in the month of January, so let's get caught up on what I've read so far. Um, I read in 2023 149 books, um, and a few of those I actually finished on the last day of the year, which meant that I continued to read into the new year. So there are about 14 books that I completed this year and I want to talk about them. So let's get started. The first book I want to talk about is called Misfit Mansion by Kay DeVault. This is the cover. This was the cutest book I've read this year. And I've read quite a few adorable graphic novels out of the 14, but this, this right here, this right here, perfection. I'm giving this 5.75 carats. It was everything. You're following a character called Iris and she and her group of friends live in this mansion and think of like Foster's home for imaginary friends meets like mystical creatures that humans would be scared of vibes looking for community. That's like the best way that I can describe it. They all live together in this mansion. They have a human caretaker and they don't really get to go outside. But Iris is obsessed with human life. She has a TV. She watches like different things. She knows all about how humans function. And <clears throat> she finds out that the humans are having a Halloween festival. And she devises a plan to get out and see the festival. I don't want to tell you anymore because it'll be spoilers. The art... So freaking cute. So accessible. Like, so adorable. And the creatures that were in this, like Kelpies, trolls, unicorns, like several, several interesting characters. I am really hoping that she turns this into a series because I definitely need more from these characters. The next book that I read was called Squire and Knight by Scott Chandler. This is the cover. And essentially it's like the knight really doesn't know what he's doing and through the power of reading and like education, the squire knows more. And it's just a funny little story about how the power of storytelling can really get you in trouble. I was also a fan of the art in here as well. It's a lot like darker and moodier than the other books, but it's still a fun, like, adventurous time. I'm pretty sure I gave this 4.5 carats. The next book I read in the month of January was called House Cat Trouble Lost and Found. This is House Cat Trouble 2. I read the first one last year. This one made me cry. I gave it five carrots. It was adorable. You're following this cat. His name is Buster and he's helping this cat Onion find his way home and just a super enjoyable time. Lots of adventure. Super fun. I am pretty sure I gave this five carrots. Definitely check it out. This is written by Mason Dickerson. And this is the second book of this year I've read. The next book, which I absolutely need to be a series, is called Crab Apple Trouble by Katie Van Dorn. And it looks like this. And all of the little people look like this. They all have like fruit heads. It's so adorable. Essentially, we're following this girl. Her name is Callaway. And she's a crab apple and she grows crab apples. And her village is having a festival. And she's so stressed out stressed out about what she wants to do for the festival that her head pops up. And then it's found by Thistle, who decides to help her figure out her like anxiety and um whether or not she should actually be worried about certain things. It's so cute. I gave this five carrots. Like, look at this art. It's so bright and colorful and fun. Like, and that's like her head popping off. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. It's so much fun. I had an absolute blast. I gave this five carrots. The next book that I read is called Skelenor the Decomposer by Emily Etlinger. 
so freaking adorable and it's, this is Skelenor and all she wants to do is play music for the humans but they're scared of her because she's a skeleton and then this is the music teacher and this is her friend Batima she's a bat I'll let that sink in for a minute and together they put together a band to help her like get to know the humans and the humans you know not be so scared of her it's amazing super cute super funny five carats definitely read it the next book I got was actually a book that's been on my to-read list for a while, and it's called Expedition Backyard. This is written by Rosemary Mosco and illustrated by Bing Lin Hu. And you follow Mole and Vol as they travel through the city. To find out you know what's what and mole has a little sketchbook and she sketches out the animals and the flowers that she sees and then vol is all about adventure but not a lot of forethought and it kind of gets them in trouble but they get out of it it's super cute super adorable and hella educational too like you learn about the plants that they come across you learn like what animals eat what animals different things like that i thought it was very educational very cute so cute i gave it five carats the next book that i read is also a graphic novel it's called hex wives it's got ben blacker marker and dolfo and marissa louise this is all there is of this i thought this was gonna be volume one but dc went ahead and canceled it so <sighs> that's it all of this in here is all you're gonna get but essentially it's about badass women who develop witchy powers and they are feminist and they're strong and they're not listening to men they're not cowering to men and that makes them angry so then they create this like secret society to try and get rid of the women witches it's great definitely check it out when I saw it, I was like, ooh, I have never even heard of this. Like, this sounds amazing. And then I read the quote on the back, and I knew I had to take it home with me. The women are too powerful. They must be tamed. Which is, of course, right up my alley. So this was amazing. I'm really sad that there's not going to be a continuation. But this was a good time. I'm pretty sure I gave this 4.5. So those are all the physical books. Now, I've read two digital books in that time frame. It's called You've Been Summoned by Lindsay Lamar. I gave this five carats. This is an arc that I received from NetGalley. Um, past Gabby actually has a full review, so I'm going to put this here. Hey, okay, so it is Monday the 8th of January. This is the first clip of the new year! Welcome to 2024! So... The first actual novel that I've completed this year is called You've Been Summoned by Lindsay Lamar. It's an interactive murder mystery. It was phenomenal. I gave it five carats. I highly recommend. It isn't released until February of this year. Um, I was given this arc through NetGalley. It was phenomenal. Like, you guys just don't, you don't have any idea. Like, I'm coming off of this fresh. It, all of the, like, clues and the twists and the turns are still, like, swirling in my brain. It was everything. It's a dual timeline story of two actresses from the 1940s and two twins from modern times who are in the actress's old house. They're there for a party that um, Syl, one of the twins, has thrown. And then things kind of go sideways. I'm not going to give you more than that because I don't want to ruin it. But when I tell you that this is one of the most intricately plotted mysteries I've read in a long time, I am not just whistling Dixie. If you have the opportunity, please, please, please go read it. But this was amazing. I gave it five carats. It comes out in February. Make sure you go watch it. Make sure you go read it. I don't know why I said make sure you go watch it. I can't remember. The next book that I read on my Kindle uh, is called Slashed. And if you're on Book Talk, then you know what I'm talking about. But this is called Slashed 
by Talia Sanchez. I gave this, okay, so this one is called Slashed by Talia Sanchez. I gave this three carats. I found it utterly ridiculous, but still a fun time. Essentially, you are following a character and she loves to be scared. She drags her two best friends to a haunted house attraction where you go through and like you have to sign a waiver because people get to touch you and stuff like that. And because there's not enough of the girls in the group, they are matched with another crew of jocks. And they're stereotypical jocks. Um, none of them have names. We don't really care about them. They're not important. But the issue is, is that before she goes in, she locks eyes with one of the scare actors, Silver Mask. And there's this, like, attraction. And then as they go through, people start dropping, like, flies. And she runs into Silver Mask, and things get wild from there. Um, if it had ended before it ended, it would have been fine. But the conclusion was kind of clunky, and it just kind of dragged, and that lost carrots for me. Also, the conclusion was just so silly compared to the tone of the rest of the novel. It was just odd. Um, but yeah, The Spice is great, just an odd premise. The other book that I read that was also digital is called Kings by Mimi Jean Pamphiloff. This has actually been on my, like, in my TBR on my list for a long, long, long time. Um... And I kind of wish that I had read it when I got it because maybe if I had read it when it came out, I would have really enjoyed it. But now that I am a seasoned dark romance reader, this was trash. <laughs> like, trash. Um, I gave it 1.5 carats. There wasn't even real spice. The guy was just an asshole. And, like, it's fine if you're, like, an asshole but hot and, like, the spice is good. You know, you can kind of, like, push yourself through it. But none of that was there. We essentially follow this woman named Mia who has realized that her brother has been kidnapped by the cartel. And King is supposed to be this man that can find anything. And so she goes to him and is like, please, please, please save my brother. And he's like, in return, you'll be mine. But like, not even in like a sexy way. Like he has her show up to his office and then she just answers phones. And then it doesn't really seem like he's doing anything. And every time she asks questions, he's like, stop asking questions. I know better. Like, it was just so haughty and not attractive in any stretch of the imagination. It just was not good. It just wasn't good. I did not enjoy it at all. I think, though, that we've made it through all of the books that I've read this year. I've gone through all of the books that I read this year. Now we're all caught up. I am currently reading two arcs that I got from NetGalley. I'm currently reading, I'm reading That Night in the Library by Eva Jerzyk. Uh, it's about a group of college graduate students that are about to graduate and they do a tool in the library to kind of help them with the chances of like graduating, I guess like for a final exam, but people, they get locked in and people start dying right up my alley. And then I'm also reading another arc that I got from NetGalley. Um, and it is called the, the No Mask Murder. And it's by Akimitsu Takagi. It is a translated Japanese mystery uh, put out by Pushkin Vertigo. And I have several Pushkin Vertigo um, novels over here. 
they keep saying that this is the cover but that's not it it's very annoying um so i'm just gonna put the cover here because it's amazing but it's a locked room mystery and i didn't need much more also it's done by pushkin vertigo which puts out a lot of translated japanese literature these are all of the pushkin vertigo novels that i actually own um so yeah i was like oh you have one i like them i'm gonna read it and I'm also thinking about maybe doing a readathon, maybe March, April, because I have several like Japanese literature novels that like I haven't read. So I would really like to get through these. And I thought maybe, you know, a TBR readathon could be fun. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to tell you, but I think that's pretty much it. So now we're all caught up. You know what I'm reading. You know what I've read. I haven't bought any books. I've been good. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I forgot to talk about Booksgiving. So the book girlies and I decided to have a Booksgiving Thanksgiving Christmas like get together Secret Santa vibes. It was immaculate, even though I was late. Um, had a blast. Here are some pictures. But these are the books that I got too. Persephone Made Me Do It by Trista Matier and Myrtle Volume 1 by G.T. Cabrera. Oh, Carver. That's what I get for trying to read backwards. Carver. Um, these are what I got. I'm very excited. I can't read this one yet because Artemis Made Me Do It is number two and I don't want to skip, but I'm so excited to have another one in my collection because I have the first one, Aphrodite Made Me Do It. And then this is a book of murder-based logic puzzles. They start from like elementary to impossible and you use them solving logic, skill, and the power of deduction. And there's a hundred in this one. It's volume one. So it's one of those like logic puzzles like, oh, this is here. This is here. So it can't be here. So that's how you solve it kind of deal. I'm very excited to attempt them because I love solving mysteries. But I feel like if I start partaking in items like this, it will strengthen my brain power. Because the other day I was looking for the word gardener and it was not fucking coming to me. You know what I ended up with? Leafkeeper. So like... It's a necessity. But yeah. So now you know what I got from the books giving. Now I'm actually leaving because I have a shoot in like an hour and a half. And I gotta get ready for it. And if you want to see that stuff, I'll put my YouTube link for my photography. Hey, welcome back to my channel. So today is January the 23rd and I finished another book. This makes 15 for the month. So that's pretty damn good. And it's called Plie by A.H. Cunningham. I gave it four carrots. It was so spicy. It was so good. It's about a dance teacher who has her own studio. And she has like a light, fluffy kind of enemies to lovers situation with one of the parents of one of her students. And then she decides that she is going to go be a sub for hire and work in like a kink space. And she gets a new dom that needs to test out his like scenes. So she becomes the sub for that. And they wear masks so they don't know each other. And it's chef's kiss. And it's an all black cast. There's a little bit of intrigue. There's a little bit of mystery. Some fuck shit's going on. It, it was a good time. It was a good time. And apparently, it's a series. That's book one. But it's a whole series. So I might go and read book two. But it was so good. I highlighted so many things. And also, I went to the library because I cannot seem to control myself. And here's what I got. I went to the library. <laughs> For one thing, okay? One one thing. I went to the library because my hold had came in, okay? My hold, which is one of the 24 for 24 book. This hold came in, this thick, thick boy right here. And I was so excited to come pick it up. So I did. But because I just can't leave well enough alone, 
here's what else I got. Remember how I said I went for one item? This. <laughs> is what I left with. So let's go through them together. So my hold is Princess Knight by, um, by Osama Tezuka. Uh, godfather of manga, creator of Astro Boy. This character, it was, it's kind of like Sleeping Beauty, how the fairy like blessed her. So they have two hearts. One is of a woman and one is of a man, but only men can take over the um, kingdom. So she like attempts to be that it's interesting it's a very like progressive look at gender roles especially in japanese culture which i think is so interesting and i love i love the art so i can't wait i can't wait to read it i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait okay the next thing i got is called the last halloween and this is book one it's called children and it's by abby howard and it looks like this and the back says that the barrier keeping creatures out of the human world has been broken and they're all loose, wreaking havoc across the planet. Chased out into the Halloween night, 10-year-old Mona meets some very strange new friends, a ghoul, a vampire, and her own monster. Together they search for the only human who can restore the barrier, save the world, and keep this from being the last Halloween. Add You're Dead by Catherine Foxfield. And the front says, the first rule of the game, trust no one. This is what our cover looks like. And this is a thriller. I'm so excited to read it. It looks like there's some kind of like teen reality superstar. They're doing like a citywide game of tag, but then people like start dying. So I'm excited for that. Next thing I picked up is called Grimoire Noir. It's a graphic novel. It's by Vera Green Tea and Yana Bogach. I don't know what it's about. Oh, okay. Bucky Orson is a bit gloomy, but who isn't at 15? His best friend left him to hang out with way cooler friends. His dad is the town sheriff, and wait for it, he lives in Blackwell, a town where all the girls are witches. But when his little sister is kidnapped because of her extraordinary power, Bucky has to get out of his own head and go on a strange journey to investigate the small town that gives him so much grief. In the process, he uncovers the town's painful history and a conspiracy that will change it forever. And this art, though. So, I'm very excited. The next thing I got is called After the Rain by Nettie Okorafor. It's written by John Jennings and illustrated by David Brame. And it is a graphic novel. It's a graphic novel adaptation of On the Road, which is about, which is a short collection of short stories. It's a story of Chioma, a young Nigerian American woman who has a dark secret and mysterious destiny that are brought to bear while visiting her grandmother in Nigeria. Sounds good to me. Next thing I picked up is called Miss Marvel and it's stretched thin. It's a graphic novel. Super short, looks super adorable. I got it from the children's lit section. Um, I just want to kind of know more about Miss Marvel as a character, and I love getting snippets of like personality attributes from one shot graphic novels that people put out. I find them just so fascinating. The next thing I picked up is called Play Ball by Nunzio de Filippis. Christina Weir and Jackie Lewis. And I believe this is about a girl who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about a girl who wants to play baseball on a boys team. The next thing I picked up is called Skullcat and the Curious Castle by Norman Shirtliff. Look how cute this is. Look how cute this is. Uh. Look at that ghost cat. So, I didn't need much else. I don't know what the hell it's about. I'm just, I'm just excited for the cuteness. The next thing I picked up was called Brobots and the Mecha Malarkey. Um, this is actually volume two, but I picked it up hoping that they had volume one digitally so I could read them both because look how cute these robots are. I did not want to leave them behind. 
They remind me of like Bee and Puppy Cat. And I need that in my life. And the next book I picked up is called Nobody But Us by Laura Van Rensburg. It says it's the perfect escape with no way out. And this is its cover. And that looks amazing. And it's about a couple who's getting to know each other. They are a professor and student. And they have this like hidden away cabin, but they're both harboring a secret. And yeah, I didn't need much else. So I picked it up. The next thing I want to talk about is All the Things We Do in the Dark by Sandra Mitchell. Looks like this. And it says, there's no such thing as a secret. Something happened to Ava. The curving scar on her face is proof. But Ava would rather keep that something hidden, buried deep in her heart and her soul. She has her best friend Sid and she has her tattoos, a colorful quilt like a security blanket over her whole body. And now suddenly she has Haley, beautiful, sweet Haley, who seems to like Ava as much as Ava likes her. And Ava isn't letting anything get in the way of fight of finally, finally seeking peace. But in the woods on the outskirts of town, the traces of someone else's secret lie frozen awaiting Ava's discovery. And what Ava finds threatens to topple the carefully constructed wall of normalcy she spent years building. The next thing I picked up is called Reindeer Boy by, by Cassandra Jean. Looks like this. And essentially it's about a character who has the same dream of finding a little boy under the tree like under the christmas tree i don't i don't really actually know what it's about but i'm excited and apparently they just have antlers so the next thing that i picked up was for town for real which is basically just a little like manga from turning red which i loved so when i saw it i was like yeah i'll, I'll read it the next thing I picked up is called Upside Down, A Vampire Tale by Jess Smart Smiley. Like, I don't know what it's about. I have no idea. Look at this art. That's why I picked it up. Look how cute this little vampire dude is. They're so cute. I'm so excited. The next thing that I did picked up was because I want to read more children lit. There are lots of movies based on children's lit that I've never seen. And I saw this, The Tale of Despero, and I was like, you know what? It's only, you know, so many odd pages. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it. So I picked it up. And this is The Tale of Despero by Kate DeCamillo. Look how cute he is with his little sword. I'm so excited. The next thing I picked up is called The Many Lives of Pusheen the Cat by Claire Belton. The next thing I picked up is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, Bad Buzz. And the last two things on our list, we're at the end, are both by Goldie Moldovsky. And if that sounds familiar, it's because they wrote The Mary Shirley Club, which I read last year with the book girlies. This one is called Kill the Boy Band, and this one is called No Good Deed. This one is basically about um, girls going to a concert and something happens, and now there's murder. And then this one is about... It basically says it's misery for the Belieber generation. I'm definitely not of that generation, but I think it would be interesting. I really like the way that she writes, so hopefully these will be good. And that is the end of my library book haul. This is how many books I took from the library. So I finished Plie today. Um, I received the hold for masters of death olive blake on ebook for my kindle but the library is only going to let me have it 14 days instead of my regular 21 so i plan on reading that so i can get through it and get done and that would be two books off my like tbr list so for 2024 i made a 24 for 24 and those were just 24 books on top of everything else that i wanted to clear out of my to read list but I, I was looking through my shelves and there are several other books that I want to get through and I put them on the shelf that's normally holding like the red books for the year and I want to show you guys what's on it okay so this is the shelf 
And this is mostly the 24 for 24 that I own like physically. And then up here is a shelf of books that I would like to get to this year, but I don't like have to. But look, there's Masters of Death. So if I finish it, that's a book off the shelf. So yeah, we'll see. I don't really have any plans for 2024 other than that list and maybe finishing 70 books. But we'll see. I mean, we're already at 15 and the month's not even over. So hopefully I can keep this up. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Hop out. Before I go to work, yesterday at work, I finished Upside Down a Vampire Tale by Jess Smart Smiley. Essentially, this is a cute little graphic novel about a vampire that loves candy and winds up having cavities. Uh, afterwards, he feels like he's not a real vampire anymore, and the story goes from there. It was kind of cute, but also super weird. And I don't know if I would consider this to be a children's graphic novel which is where i found that um the topics on wanting to belong the anxiety that comes with not being a belonging and the heroic attempts to save one's loved ones should definitely have at least pushed it up to middle grade um i thought it was the cutest thing ever and i'm going to give it 3.5 carats I also started reading Masters of Death by Olive e. Blake, and I am currently four chapters in. I love all of the characters. I love Fox and how he's supposed to be like the swoony bad boy seer. I love death. Like, I don't know if this book has a sequel. I don't know the gist of how this book's conclusion goes, but all of you, if you're listening, please make a book with just death. His voice, his tone, his sarcasm, it's chef kiss. Chef's kiss. And I love our main character, Viola. And I love that the creatures that are listed in here, like their mythical beings, are not just European vampire. European seer. They're different creatures from different cultures, and I absolutely fucking love that. So I'm on chapter four. I am, I don't even think I'm 10% into the book. Yeah, I'm, I'm 9% into the book, but I am getting there. And this is when your update. Also, today is the 26th. Fight! Hey, it's the 6th be super quick because i'm hella beat i did a double today it's 6 a.m it's saturday the 27th and i have some catching up to do so two days ago i started reading masters of death by olivia blake i am currently seven chapters in 79 pages um 19 i'm really liking it so far i really like the cast of characters the ghosts the creatures the fraud i love death i really hope he comes back more often or she writes a complete series just on death as a character because the way she portrays him i love so so far i am absolutely loving this even though it is pretty fantasy based um i picked it up because it's supposed to have some kind of mystery to it but right now it's just straight fantasy but i'm not hating it so i'm also currently reading a gift for a ghost by borgia gonzalez this is its cover and I am currently 91 pages in, and there are 128 pages. Um, I'm really liking it. I'm not quite sure what it's about. It's supposed to be like two dual timelines of a girl and then a skeleton as they like traverse the afterlife together. But it keeps hopping between like 1850s and 2016. And there's like a girl punk band. And that's really all I know. I'm mostly just here for the vibes, but so far i am thoroughly enjoying it i also started princess knight that's where i am so far um 17 pages in um i am liking it so far but i feel like i'm not in it far enough to have the vibes you know 
the two books that I did finish was Robots 2 and The Mecha Malarkey and Skullcat and The Curious Castle. Um, I'm giving this one three carrots and I'm giving this one four carrots, I believe. Um, I really liked this. It was cute, a little weird. This was just straight adorable. Like, this is number two in a series, so originally I wasn't going to read it, but I couldn't find issue one anywhere, and I, I wanted to know what was going on. First off, look at these robot brothers. They're so flippin' adorable. They're so cute. And then they get together like Voltron. It's everything. It's full of puns, food jokes. It's great. It is very much um, Investigators vibes, and I absolutely love it. No, uh, we're all caught up, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <sighs> Good morning. Today is the 30th of January. I have two days left to complete more books before the end of the month. And last night, I completed one. I finished Four Town For Real, which I picked up because I loved Turning Red. And I was like, oh, it's a cute little like graphic novel tie-in. Like, no. So this is a manga. An actual, beautifully illustrated dark skin showing manga like look at them like do you do you see them like the way I the way I wasn't ready I love them them. So this is about the boy band in Turning Red and it's specifically about them. There aren't really any like Turning Red tie-ins except for that part at the end. If you know, you know. I don't want to give any spoilers if you haven't seen Turning Red. But each story is about the five boys and like they talk about some like heavy feelings in this like inadequacy, anxiety, um, jealousy like a lot of things go on in this i gave it four carrots the illustrations were amazing and the story was really good and there was so much comedy like it was just absolutely adorable for four stars and then let's update you on what i'm reading so i started masters of death like two days ago and the other day i was on 10% but I went and got my nails done and I was reading while I was getting my nails done and I am zooming now I'm at 41% and at chapter 16 there are 31 chapters in the novel so I'm practically 50% of the way through I'm so excited it's getting so good like when I first started reading it I was like oh my god like I really love death but now that I'm 41% in, Fox, the Angel and the Reaper, Cal and Myra, I think their names are, like, all of the characters are, like, speaking to me in a way that I wasn't expecting from a novel like this. And a lot of people are talking about how they don't like the novel because it's kind of long-winded. But, like, the actual writing of the novel is, like, flowery. It's, like, verse it's like poetry. It's it's giving uncultured. Like, it's amazing. Why don't you like it? It's so weird. It's so weird. I don't know. Maybe something happens that I don't know about, and that's why people don't like it. But right now, I love it. And I have it physically. So let's see where we are. So we are at the start of chapter 16. Okay, so we are here now. Ah! Oh my god. Get that out the way so you guys can literally see, like. So much product. I'm hoping to have this finished by the end of the month and that'd be nice because that'd mean that I'll finish four like actual novels 
in the month of January because mostly they've been graphic novels, which there isn't anything wrong with graphic novels, but I like to have an even mix. Okay, I don't know what time it is. I just woke up. I'm going back to bed and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey, it is January the 30th. It's Tuesday and I finished two more graphic novels, so let's talk about them. I finished An Unkindness of Ravens by Panosian, Ignazi, and Mascolo. Looks like this. And I finished Stretch Thin, Miss Marvel by Nadia Shamaz and illustrated by Nabi H. Ali. I love the illustration style of this novel. Like, it's watercolory. It's, like, very, like, cutesy. I, I loved it. Essentially, it's about Miss Marvel. She is now part of a Junior Avengers team made up of herself, um, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, and Miles Morales Spider-Man. They are training under Tony Stark when this guy shows up and is like, hey, give me all your data. And they're like, um, no. And then they scare him off and he disappears and then he comes back as a bigger bat later in the novel. Um, I love this because this is everything. Like, it has stories. Like, there's a little bit in the story for everybody. Like, I am a eldest child. I am an eldest girl child. There's a lot of responsibilities heaped on our shoulders, especially um, children of color. So she's working with the Avengers. She's working with her job. She's got to keep up with her religion, her culture, her family. Her family feels like she's not doing enough. She feels like she's drowning because she's doing too much. Like that is very much a woman of color thing that kind of like floats in our mind so to see that illustrated to show that hey your friends can be there for you your family can be there for you like you don't have to take everything on your shoulders like i gave it 4.5 carats it was great the next book that i finished was an unkindness of ravens and i picked this up on the cover and title alone like do you see these badass goth ladies like look at look at look at them look at them but this covers issues one through five of an a kindness of ravens i'm hoping that this is an introduction to more of the story but this was published in 2021 i don't know what it is about me getting the start of really awesome series and then never getting anything else from them again but it needs to stop this is about a girl named Wilma, and she it's just her and her father. Their mother and older sister died in a car crash when she was very young. She moves to this new school where a girl named Waverly is missing, and Waverly looks just like her. Looks just like her, to the point to where everyone is freaking out. There are talks of, like, witch trials and these girls being weird and, like, Scarlet being of the popular girls and, like, who should you trust, who don't you trust. Lots of things are not adding up for Wilma. She has lots of questions. Um, and only some of the questions get answered. I'll be straight up. This is contains issues one through five. So I was hoping that there would be more. And I'm hoping that they're still just working on this and it'll come out later. But like, I need more. I gave it four carats because I really liked where it was going. But it irks me that it's not finished. And if it is finished, then it's still not finished to my standards. You know what I mean? Like, err. And that is what you missed. Ugly. And now we're all caught up. So I'll see you next time. Right? We have one more day of January, and I am hoping to fit a couple more finished books in. But this brings me to finishing an unkindness of ravens, brings me to 21 books for the month of January. That's pretty damn good. I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that one. We're at 21 books. See you next time. Bye!